Uh, and you have a few, a few ones that you'll use. Uh, so the movement function uh, move the actual arm around, uh, which uses waypoints to go from A to B. Uh, the weight function you probably use to tell it to stop until the, the actual block gets there. And then the set function, you'll need to use that to turn the conveyor belt on and off. And then you also have the, the gripper function, which obviously controls that. Um, and that's about it for the commands. Um, there is the usual you know, loops, if else statements, <coughs> and stuff like that. Uh, and it can also do thread, threading and uh, state machines. Yeah, the event based stuff. Um, so once you've got your <coughs> once you've got your command that you want, uh, you can then edit it once you've got it selected. Uh, the movement has three different sort of functions or modes. Uh, you have the joint movement, the linear movement, and the P movement, which I never remember what it's called even though I check every single time. <laughs> um, but they're all, they're all fairly um, similar anyway. So the J, um, it uses the joints for um, movement so that it'll um, be a constant speed and acceleration for the joint itself. Uh, that usually means that in order to do that, it'll move in sometimes odd patterns to try and keep a constant speed. Uh, the linear movement, it does it on the tool um, speed and acceleration. So this, everything lower than this bit attached is classed as a tool. Um, and then the tool plus the object that you pick up is the payload. Uh, and there is a tool point somewhere around here that the, the robot will move around which I'll demonstrate in a bit. Um, so this one will, using that tool point as a reference, will move from there, and it will move in a linear fashion. So A to B is directly A to B. Uh, and then P is exactly the same, it uses the tool speed and acceleration, but it also just it blends the points together. So if you've got, um, so like three waypoints, the joint move may sort of, it'll do like a curve sometimes or it'll come out, uh, it just not act how you would expect it would. Uh, well, a linear movement will move from A to B in, a straight, in straight lines. Um, and then the P will put radiuses on the waypoint, so it'll move in a, in a curve. So it'll basically fill it that corner. Uh, so if you had a square of waypoints, it would do a circle in the middle. <laughs> um, but you won't need to buffer with that one. I find it's a bit finicky to use. Uh, the linear movement's probably the, the one to use, really. Um, and then on it, in the program, when stuff's orange, um, it's expecting you, it's waiting for you to decide something or label. Uh, so for the move, so like these weight, there's nothing that's been set, yeah. so it's come as orange. But if I were to set it, it would go green. Okay. Um, then once you've got your movement command, you can then um, start adding waypoints to move it to positions. Uh, and then to set the, the waypoint, you just press the button that says set the waypoint. Uh, and then it gives you, it moves to this uh, move screen. With this screen, you can then uh, move physically move the robot around. Um, and this, by default, references to this screen here, which you can move around to get different look. So this way is to me. But if I were to rotate this, then that screen is there. So if you accident, if you ever doing anything, you accidentally move this. Because you can see the X, Y, and Z of the tool point is moving around. It can get really confusing when you when you're trying to move it downwards and it's just going all over the place. 
Um, but then if that's the case, you can just set it to the base. And then these are, this, this bit clusters the base. Um, there's also the tool, you can do it based on the tool as well. Which I think is looking down from it, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, it's looking downwards. Um, but I tend to change it to base just so you. Um, so you can move them with this uh, screen, uh, and then so you can see like it's rotating around the tool point. Yeah. Um, and then this is also where a lot of the cost of these more expensive apps come from. Just that kind of level of control. Yeah, is it the the inverse kinematics aren't running on it constantly? Mm. That's very fancy. It's very impressive. Yeah. The only like now that this is all out of sync, it's a bit of a pain to if you were to manually set it to try it, you could work it all out. Um, but because we have this torque sensor, it comes with uh, what's called the active drive. So by using the torque, you can move it around, um, which is really good for doing collaborative stuff. You could like put it somewhere, tell it to do a process, and you can move it around. Um, but I literally only use it for this one button that straightens it all up and levels <laughs> it out. <laughs> um, then the other things, the other ways you can move it around is using this free drive button. Um, and it's also there. When you hold that button in, um, it unlocks all the motors so you can also move them around. Um, What's the difference between the free drive and moving it? Like without testing the free drive. Um, do you mean with the active drive? Yeah. Um, so with the free drive, it literally just unlocks the motors, so there's no um, resistance. They just I can just move them because uh, by default they okay. they counteract whatever force you you're doing on them. With the active drive. It's reading the, the force applied on, on the tool point to generate, uh, and instead of counteracting it, it's actually moving it in the same direction. But it does like to, to drift. Um, and a lot of that is because uh, there's a payload. It uses the payload weight and it's not set right. So I guess gravity just sort of sends it funny. Um, There's that more of the dynamics aspect where we had all those vectors that I had to deal with. Um, I had to manage the, the mass and the weight. Oh, uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So you can also individually turn the um, individual joints as well. Uh, they are all 360 degrees. They operate in like 180 to minus 180. Um, and obviously with this this one, it's going to get stuck. Um, and then you can put in directly, you can then manually put the, the value in if you want. Then when you do make a big enough change, it will ask you to confirm that change uh, just in, in like this way, if I tell her to move out here and I'm in the way, I don't really want to be doing that. Yeah. Uh, and you get a nice little little uh, movie that tells you where it's going to go, and then you just press the button, hold it down, and it'll move. Um, so yeah, that's it for moving. So once I pick my waypoint, so I'll say here, uh, click, and click OK. Now the movement goes green, because uh, it's got a waypoint so it knows where to move to. And then you can just add more waypoints. Um, yeah. And then like, if I want to be over here now, I 
could pre drive it there, but you're not likely to get it all lined up and, and square. You, know, you could end up with just it be slightly out like that, which is never ideal. So you could use the active drive. Uh, you can change it so it translates <laughs> rather than rotates and stuff, so it's always going to be level. Mm. And you could position it pretty fairly accurately. Um, same with these, you can get it, you can do quite small changes. Um, but if you need the precision, just type in the bio. Uh, you can also increment or decrement it. So I've got my two waypoints. Um, and I'll just delete. Obviously, that was for now. Um, so then, when you. I'm sorry. To um, play or to start the program, you can just use these playback functions along the bottom here. Uh, and then, if it's, it wants to be at that first waypoint, you set it, because then that, it decides that that's where you start. So you can see it's going to uh, move its merry way. And like you notice, you may notice it did a, a curve. That's because it's doing a joint move. Then once it's there, you press, you press play, and it will just uh, move to the waypoints. Um, and by default, the the program automatically loops around. And what's our objective? Is there like a task we're trying to? Oh, I have not. Not sure. Yeah, didn't see. Um, This is what you'll be doing. Just picking it up, putting it there. Uh, so there's the, the motor, and then there's an infrared sensor here as well. You activate the motor from the other one? Yeah. yeah. We need to set. Um, uh, so in the I.O. screen, you can see all the, all the, the values. So the analog in one is for the, the sensor and it goes from like 2.6 to about 2.3 and uh, then the digital output you can turn on and off directly directly there um, there's anything else to mention oh the I should probably mention that. So the gripper, um, you can operate manually by in the tab, uh, and then you can just press the button to open and close it. Does it have a feedback on how much it, it, pressure? It does. Um, so when it detects an object, it just automatically stops um, with like no force really at all. Um, And it doesn't it doesn't hurt, um, but it still can pinch. Um, so generally, go. I did this on the, the first time. I was like, yeah, you just put your hand in here, and it's fine. It doesn't hurt. And it got got me right on the on the button. Um, but even at so it's got a force as well. Uh, even at one hundred percent, it grabs you, but it doesn't. It's like it's just a stronger yeah. grab. Like I can get my hand out now, but it doesn't doesn't hurt. How different is this robot from the one that we get to use in our big project? Uh, worlds apart, uh, absolutely okay. worlds apart. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what else to okay. say. It's uh, <laughs> totally it's in a whole new a whole right. other level. Um, Yeah, this is permission. It's like professional <laughs> kit is used in the industry, whereas the kit that you're using is, is basically toys. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, one one day it would be really cool to have um, more of these arms, but 
Yeah, this was like 40 grand. I was just gonna ask you, I remember it was very expensive. Yeah, I mean, the, this just this gripper alone is four grand. Well, I do know um, a company that makes cheaper robotic arms that are still very high quality. I kind of, you know, kind of I'm interned for them over the summer, so I was like kind of plugging in. So, for the UAM ones? No, um, it's called um, Autom- Automata Tech, yeah. and the company in London. Uh, about five thousand pounds. Yeah, I think Jonathan may have mentioned it. Yeah. He said that he said that they are in all of his lectures. Mm-hmm. Did he? Oh. Maybe, maybe I'm just remembering. Probably. It's but it's said several times about uh, someone in turn that you know someone was there for the summer. Uh, uh, and then when it comes to the actual the uh, command, you just use this screen. Uh, it does tell you that these are undefined, so make sure you're devoting them. And you said action. And then what you put in here, you can save it, and then it remembers. Yeah. It even renames the function so you know wherever it's open or close. Um, and then reading values, setting values for the set point, set function, you can <coughs> set whatever you want. So in this case, it could be digital output. Uh, and then you could use a wait command or a statement to just um, to wait for the analog input. Yeah. It's up to you, you, you guys to decide how you wanna wanna do it. So you know, I've known you for like almost three years, and it's the first time I noticed that you use your left hand. I'm left-handed, yeah. <coughs> uh, so is Craig. Really? Mm-hmm. Me and Craig are left-handed. I remember he used to solder the wrong way around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at one point in the workshop, we were all left-handed. But then Jack... Before Jack? Uh, yeah, before Jack joined us. He's a traitor. <laughs> right-handed traitor. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Um, if you ever want to like edit the positions of the values, like you can copy and paste them, you can cut them, uh, you can suppress them, you can move them up and down just with these buttons here. Um, <coughs> that's about it, really. So, yeah, Quick go for time. it. Yeah.